was introduced to Unitarian Universalism by a very good friend who herself wasn't UU, but she declared that I was one and I trusted her judgment. And though I'm not sure how much since it took me an entire year to actually follow her advice and look into the faith. I am so glad that I did for it has been life-saving to me. I remember even today, the first time I entered a UU congregation, and I've told the story before where to me, it felt like Jake and the movie, The Blues Brothers, where he's sitting in the back of the church and this light starts shining on him and he does those flips to the front of the church. And then when he flips back, uh, Elle would ask him, what, what are you doing? And he said, I have seen the light. I have seen the light. So all these different faith, all these different beliefs, I felt coming together and being able to connect with those people sounded like heaven to me. And that's where I wanted to be. And of course, like most newly converted, I threw myself into everything in the congregation. I volunteered at the office. I coordinated special events. I attended every workshop and joined every committee that they had to offer. I served as a worship associate. A new life was infused in me and it was the result of being connected to like-minded souls. I was especially fond of the DRE, and it so happened that she was attending seminary. And during one of our many conversations, she asked if I had ever thought of attending seminary. The question did not take me by surprise because I had thought about it. I actually started thinking about it shortly after I joined the congregation. But the fact that somebody else thought that I could go to seminary made such a difference for me. So then I started thinking about this seriously. It sat well with me. I, I, it felt right that I should go to seminary. But I was having a hard time telling people about it. Um, and I'm not quite sure why. So whenever anyone would ask me, about my plans, I would say, oh yeah, you know, I want to become a chaplain. It felt too intimidating, you know, the idea of leading a church, of being responsible for the um, spiritual life of others. It, it just felt beyond me. My first year of seminary was so much more than I could have imagined. I could feel myself being formed I felt myself broken so many times and then feeling the pieces slowly coming back together. But most importantly, I was feeling so loved and connected to the other people who were embarking on, on this work with me, my fellow seminarian. I was once again reminded of why I first became a UU to begin with. That first year was also when I began to develop my personal theology. I had trouble with the language, though I felt it inside of me. It, it was connecting, connecting with people, which was what got me excited when I first started in that congregation that very first day. And then here I was again in seminary finding it. My chaplain internship was really what pushed me over the edge, so to speak, to um, be able to adjust to what my personal theology really was. And, and I do choose the, the word 
um, edge on purpose, pushing me over the edge on purpose because it was physically and emotionally exhaustive, my chaplain internship, I mean. At the same time, though, and those hospital rooms with the patients, sitting with them in their pain, I felt the holy. It felt like we were creating sacred spaces. I met Anne in one of those rooms at that hospital as the chaplain over the summer. Anne, to say the least, had a tough life. The kind of tough that movies are based on. She and her younger brother were abused as children and she didn't feel loved or wanted by her parents. That same older brother committed suicide as a young adult. Anne married a man who turned out to be a child molester who used the internet to lure unsuspecting children. She was publicly humiliated, then ostracized when the police knocked down her door to arrest her husband to her shock and disbelief. People she thought were her friends alienated her and she just felt just as much the monster that her husband was. Life for her became quite lonely and um, she was dealing with a lot of shame around that time. Um, and her children as well, she felt, were dealing with all that shame. And if this wasn't enough, she was diagnosed with cancer about seven years ago. During our conversation, Anne spoke at length and always in a very low key tone. And as she shared, she just became more and more relaxed. And it just seems that she was feeling freer, like she was unburdening herself. She would even reach for my hand periodically. And as I sat across from Anne, engaging her as she recounted her story, holding my hand, and we looked into each other's eyes, our deeper selves linked and our souls connected. The space between us felt pure. It felt holy. No barriers, no shame, no embarrassment. And because Anne spoke about losing her religion, I asked her, what felt spiritual or even religious to her nowadays? A smile slowly appeared on her face and she replied, spending time with Nono. She continued and the smile got wider and she had a faraway look on her face and she said, yeah, my grandson Noah. Sometimes I think those moments with him is the only thing that keeps me alive. Her relationship with her grandson, her connection to him is what was sustaining her. Being in relationship with you, with other human beings at a deep level is what sustained me. It is where I find the holy. How about you? What do you draw on spiritually? What is that special place where the holy reveals itself to you? Like Anne and myself, is it connection? Connecting to others? Connecting to nature, maybe. Or perhaps it is something completely different. Whatever it is, my prayer for you is that it holds and sustains you. May it be so. Amen.